Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update. And today I'm going to talk about some shocking news coming from the Ethereum Foundation. I just can't believe it. And was I wrong in a few ways with the tweet today? Mm, possibly. I want to break that down for you. And is R3 an interledger, which was introduced by Ripple in 2015, and XRPL Labs, that's Wietse Wind in the Netherlands, are they going to help improve Bitcoin mining? Yeah, actually, I think their technology is going to make an improvement and it could lead to a certifiable clean and greener Bitcoin. I will explain. But first, let's take a look at what Kathy Wood is doing. She, of course, has ARC Investment and it was reported today that she is going in big time with Ethereum. 639 shares of Grayscale's Ethereum Trust is now in her fund. That is worth more than 20 million. She really needs to turn around her fund because she's had a bad three months. And I think, well, it's quite a bit of a change from last year because her bet on Bitcoin, Tesla, and Zoom was excellent last year. She now has 50 billion under management and she has made the top 10 list, not a top 10 list you want to be on. It is for the worst performing funds. So I hope that she does get a turnaround with her decisions, but I'm telling you the news that came out of Ethereum today, if I was Kathy Wood, I would be a little bit embarrassed. This is shocking. I think. There was a security vulnerability that was first spotted in 2019. It could have brought the main net to a complete halt. They published this blog today and explained that it was at risk for a catastrophic denial of service attack. Yeah, of course, it never came, but for one year, it was at a serious risk. The blog is titled Dodging a Bullet. I think it's a deplorable lack of transparency. I want to know who knew, because as you see in the blog here, it actually, actually had been publicly disclosed by mistake at least once. So there were people who knew, but they chose to be quiet. They chose to ignore. And I think it is just really damaging to their reputation at the very least. Now, what caught my eye today was that Bitcoin had been slipping below the 40% dominance. And in a bull market, I think this is quite telling. And as I saw it earlier today, a solution can't wait for new tech mining. And those who have capital should take control of hash power and through a consensus, decide on how to execute a proof of stake and just do it with the hashtag survival. Well, I got a lot of interesting uh, replies, of course. One person said that uh, not to worry that Bitcoin had fallen below 40% back in 2017. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain why you just cannot compare 2017 to 2021. And also, too, taking control would show it was centralized, someone wrote. Well, it is centralized right now in terms of the hash power. It's being controlled by China. And there is news that came out of China today that, boy, I can tell you, at least that portion of my tweet, I still very much believe in. And then Jungle Inc., whom I really respect, he doesn't see it my way at all. We'll take a look at what he says. So in 2017, the year began with just 617 cryptocurrencies and it ended with nearly 1,500. Today on CoinMarketCap, they list more than 6,000. And yes, I know many of them are ghost chains, but there are also a number of very high quality coins backed by an amazing amount of money, adoption, and use cases that are just not even comparable at all to what was going on in 2017. Let me show you an example. This is really big news today. This is Cardano. They 
have announced that they have an Ethereum ERC20 token converter on the way. This will enable those ERC20 tokens to be brought over to a proof of stake chain. And I think this is an example of a real quality development. Polkadot, they have also come out with an announcement. The parachain launch phase has begun. These parachains are groundbreaking. It solves the scaling and Ethereum high fees issue with a possibility of hundreds of thousands of transactions in a very short period of time. It is in sight. Point in case, technology advancement that is happening today is nowhere near what it was in 2017. And therefore, what I see is that there are a lot more places to park your money to have a return on investment. And I think the dominance that has been enjoyed in the past by Bitcoin, I just don't see it going forward. Now, let me show you what Jungle wrote. And I just, uh, yeah, I so respect him. I want to tell you that he says that making Bitcoin a proof of stake would be a massive mistake. It will never be able to compete with the development of Ethereum and ADA and XRPL, etc. It is what it is. Bitcoin ain't dropping because of its network capability and will be just fine in the end. I can hear Jungle's voice when I read that. Well, he could be right. Mm, very possibly he could be right. But I think uh, that what we need to really pay attention to because of the news that came out of China today is this control of hash power. China is going to shut the banks and the finance firms totally out of cryptocurrency business. This is really a big risk um, that the government is going to forbid the finance sector, including online payment processors and traders and with clearing and settlement, no crypto at all. So no thank you for this level of risk. I think we need to take control of the hash power. And, and, and so be it, because I think it lies in the hands of the wrong group of people right now. And if you were Pomp, well, Pomp is doing his part. You got to give him credit. He's going to sell pizzas. Yep, 20 and $30 pizzas. And then he's going to throw the profit, 100% of the profit to the developers of Bitcoin. And I think that's great. I mean, all the all the money that can be put in the pockets of developers, I think is a good thing in this space. For a 14 inch um, pizza on eatbitcoinpizza.com, there is one called the No Keys, No Cheese. And if you order it from Santa Monica, I asked him, what well, exactly how much profit falls to the bottom line. It is kind of interesting to look at the profit in a pizza because yes, uh, there is uh, some profit, <laughs> but you've got to factor in the cost of equipment, uh, the cost of in ingredients, which is 25% according to Domino's. You have marketing, you have delivery drivers, you have your rent, your labor, your insurance, your utilities. And I assume Pomp is going to be getting royalties. So I really wanted to know how much is going to fall to the bottom line? Well, he hasn't answered me. But when you look at the Domino's pizza chain, as of March 31st, 2021, they are operating on a net profit margin of about 11%. So that means you've just got a couple of bucks for a no keys, no cheese pizza. It's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, I guess. But let me tell you what I think is really amazing. I want you to hang on everyone because this is Darren Moore. He cranks out incredible research, a, a, a large amount of research. I am a Patreon member and I can tell you that he dropped a bombshell today in my opinion and I want you to check it out. But full credit to Darren here. You can join his Patreon at Fame21More 
you won't be disappointed. What he found is this company here that is GX Blocks. Okay, they are a blockchain platform that gives you exposure to Bitcoin by mining with a solution to the global energy problem. This is what they say, using clean energy and immersion technology that mines on technology that runs on R3 Corda, Interledger, which is, like I had said, something that was put out by Ripple in 2015 by Stefan Thomas, who was, and, 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 and uh, you know, not just Stefan, but uh, who was the um, former CTO at Ripple and also XRPL Labs, which is Wheats Win. And it looks like the project was born from an MIT competition in 2019. And you can see here, they do list Ripple, but I think it is more in reference to the fact that Ripple is associated with Interledger. And also, if I show you on a, another uh, PDF here, you can see they reference Spring. And this is part of the uh, Ripple X now. They have changed the name of that. And they're using the developer tools. And so, yeah, I think that it is quite interesting because the logo actually shows up again on another PDF. And this project, which is coming from a group in Greece, will use the R3 Core app for their decentralized smart contracts. And that's how they're going to execute this payout of revenue from a Bitcoin mining contract with the transparency of distributed ledger technology. This will be passive income from a mining pool with a low carbon footprint. Payments come monthly and you have a choice of contracts. Uh, I found a PDF that talks about contracts starting as low as $250 and going up as high as $1,000. Their Twitter page has been up since 2019. It's active and in a Medium article, they go into greater detail of how they'll take this hybrid business model and combine mobile mining with units in Greece. They're going to focus on solar and hydroelectric power sources with the intention to expand to biomass and wind turbines, coupled with the 3M science of liquid cooling solutions to make it possible for a certifiable greener Bitcoin. So the fact that that technology from R3, Interledger and XRPL Labs is quite interesting and I'm I'm all for it. So yeah, I think uh, this is where maybe uh, Jungle Inc. was right. Just let it be, it is what it is. And the reason why it's losing its dominance, he sees as uh, nothing to do with the mining. So I don't know, you know, it's such a controversial subject and it's uh, so complex and there is no easy answer. Uh, I'm just always searching for an answer because I'm one of those people who want to find a solution to the problem. And I think this isn't the ultimate end all solution, but I think it's probably a pretty good one. It's a step in the right direction, that's for sure. All right, everybody, we're jumping to the fluff and today's fluff is really, it will touch your heart. It's touching. Um, there's a Japanese man who studied in the U.S. 28 years ago. While he was in the U.S., he bought a 1989 Toyota Supra. He loved his Supra very much. <laughs> he bought it and then took it back to Japan, and he's kept it for all these years. He had no intention on selling it, but he has a cat who became sick and then ran up a bunch of vet bills, and it was very costly to pay off. 
and the cat's name, which is Silk, uh, he just couldn't bear, you know, parting with his cat. So he decided to part with his car to pay off those vet bills and he put it on the Yahoo auction. He listed it for 26 thousand US dollars. That is a lot, but you have to understand that there's a lot of uh, vintage Supra collectors in Japan. And he knew it was high considering the age and also the over 100,000 miles on the engine. But uh, with the various cosmetic and performance modification and his, um, his feeling for the car, that's the price that he put on it. Similar cars on the auction were priced at around 10,000 US dollars. So it tells you it was very, very high. There was just two days left till the auction was going to end and a construction owner saw it and he read the story because he listed the story about the cat and having a cat of his own and also a love for the vintage Supra he bought it. In fact, he paid over the amount that was being asked. And then he went and took one more step and told the seller that should you ever want to buy this car back, I promise that I will sell it back to you for the same price that you, uh, that I bought it for. So what a sweet, sweet, gesture and i'm not sure if he'll ever be able to get his supra back but there is silk <laughs> and silk is a very very lucky cat so thank goodness there are a lot of kind people in this world all right everybody do take care sayonara for now bye bye